up bronco fam today's the day we're finally doing an oil change on our 22 bronco wild track so starting out of course you wear your dirtiest clothes possible because you're going to get them dirty and then you're going to need a 15 mil socket you need oil for this one i'm using mobile one 5w30 and you're going to need your motocraft Ford fuel filter, Ford oil filter, part number FL-262-A. I picked this one up at the Ford dealership for $15 each. I picked up multiple ones. Next, good idea to get a pair of pliers because there is a plastic oil plug that twists off. Sometimes it's hard by hand. Doesn't hurt to get some shop towels. I use some scrub wipes, just a little scrub bucket to scrub your hands when they get dirty. Next. You're gonna need an oil pan. This one was ten dollars at Walmart. A funnel to put your oil back in the motor, and that is everything you're gonna need for your oil change process. If you're skinny enough to get underneath it, if not, you're gonna need some jacks and ramps to lift it up. For you non-Sasquatch owner, you're probably gonna need some jacks or ramps. So after you get your skid plate off, using four 15 millimeter bolts, you're gonna drag this heavy SOB out and throw it to the side. And we're gonna go back under. All right, so now that we're underneath, that's gonna be your oil drain plug. And yes, of course, the dealership marks it with a yellow marker to show that it has not moved. Yellow on yellow makes perfect sense. We will not be doing that. We have blue and black markers. So, of course, it's angled. It's gonna be coming right out this way. Do not put your face on this side. Put your, put your pan. Oh, let me zoom out. Okay, put your pan and the flow is gonna be going in and then slowly adjust to let it drip in. If you have never gone underneath your Bronco, this is your differential for the front. This is your drain port for your differential as well. We were not doing that today. We will do that another day. But yes, this is why you might need pliers because this is plastic and can be very difficult. I don't even know, let's see. 90% strength. Oh yeah, it's going. I'm gonna put the camera down before I splash right into y'all's faces. So, uh, if I get covered in oil, you know what happened. All right, so we made a big mess. Yes, it made it in the pan. I did everything I told y'all to do, but this thing came out fast, like it gushed out. It was, ah, it was draining into here and it was overflowing. That's how fast it came out of. I've never had that happen with this pan. I've changed trucks, cars, oil, everything. In the vents was open, so I don't know what happened. This is crazy. Well, this thing was angry, pissed out, got all over me. Yeah, lots of fun, but we got it. Now we're gonna put that back in and change the rest. All right, so next up, you need to get this big old one and one sixteenth socket. So take this ball filter off because you can't make it easy. We're gonna put a reducer on there because we don't have a half inch impact. And everything we use around here is an impact. We like to do more work. There you go. And after that, you're gonna wobble it and wiggle it on out of there. Now it's hot because I, ah! because I just drove it. I got a cut on my finger, and it just cut. <laughs> so, you always want to do an oil change after you just drove, so it's at the hottest point. Well, there you go, yeah. No gloves here. All right, next you grab your own new filter, and you're gonna change three O-rings just to, just to make sure this thing is secure, because they couldn't just stick to the old fashioned way. I guess I'm gonna get a pit, because this is too hard. <laughs> and dry. 
make sure you push this filter all the way down. We've got about two inches, which is above average. You know what I mean? And you know, you just gotta thread the needle. There you go. Before you go and impact it, you know, trying to get a few hand turns. You know, once it gets hard, you just hug a dug at it. Too slow. There! Perfect torque specs because we matched the yellow line. So, obviously it's torque to spec. Not going anywhere. Scrub wipe time. All right, next you're gonna get the cool little cap that has an oil or a genie lantern on top. And it also says 5W30. So you know you can't mess it up. It tells you exactly what to put. So you're gonna take your 5W40, I mean 30, and you're just gonna pour it right up here, you know? Just like that. And how many quarts do you need? Six. Six for this. Okay. 2.7 takes six. And how much is each bottle? I just get two five quarts because it's cheaper than buying a single quart. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And then just ball it. No, it has, a, it has the quarts on the side. It'll tell you. Okay, cool. All right, so after our second bottle, it says liter of quart. We're looking at quarts. That's one, two, three, four, and then up here is five. So you just want to pour until you touch this line, and you'll equal six quarts. So do your little hard thumb press, and then just keep checking. Just pour little by little. Halfway there. And we're there. Alright. So we got a little more than a quart. It's not going to be a big deal to put a little more. After that, I'm going to take a rag or something. It's going to drip a little. You're just going to carry it over to your drain port, and that's it. And put your cap back on, because you don't want it spraying into your engine bay. Okay, now that that's on, the filter's tight, drain plug's in. I did put the skid plate back on, it was just four bolts, I'm sure you all can figure that one out. Next you start it up. So she's the only one that's clean. We're gonna go and show you how to reset your oil life on the screen. So, so first, first you're gonna go to the menu and you're gonna scroll all the way down until you get to settings. You're gonna hit oil life and it says hold okay to reset oil life because we just changed it. And now look, it says 100% and your oil check light should go off now. Perfect, thank you.